Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity t Sharp bite size tutorial. In today's video, we'll be covering instantiation, also known as spawning, as a way to spawn in projectiles, players, whatever you want in your game, anything that spawns in, you'll be using the instantiate method. So we'll start off simple and write some code just to spawn in an object, we'll be able to modify where it's actually spawned in at, and then once we've done that, we'll write some code to actually access the components on the game object, so that we can go and grab the rigid body, for example, and add a force as if we were firing a cannonball, for example. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. So we're starting off pretty simple, we just have the normal camera, light source, post processing, then we have a floor, the player, and the wall. There's no special scripts on here, just normal colliders and mesh renderers. Before we write the code to actually spawn anything in, let's make a prefab. So a prefab is going to be the thing we spawn in, it's the game object that we're going to keep creating whenever we spawn. So to do that we actually have to make the game object, so let's right click, create a, a sphere, we'll go with a sphere, and we'll call it ball, okay. And what we can do is we can then go save that to our project, so drag it into wherever you're working. You can then delete it from the scene. If we go into the prefab by double clicking it and going to scene view, you can then go and find your prefab. I'm going to drag on the material that I made, the red material. Okay, we've got the collider, mesh render, mesh filter, and I'm going to set the position to be zero. Then I can go find it again, and here we are with our ball. Now this in your game might be your projectile or your player or whatever it is you're spawning in, okay? This is what we're going to spawn in. I'm actually going to give it a rigid body while I remember, so that later on we can access the rigid body on this game object. Now if we head back over into the Unity scene, okay, let's create a new game object for our spawner. So we'll call it spawner, reset the position, okay, and we'll add a script called spawning example. Now go ahead, create a new script called spawning example if you're following along. There's a little bit of code in there, I'll show you in a minute, but it's nothing too fancy. We're actually going to be writing some for this video, and all this means is this is our spawner and here it is. Now when we write the code, we're going to spawn stuff relative to this position. So just move it somewhere where you want objects to spawn in. I'm going to spawn stuff in over here, okay? So just to the side of the player, we're going to spawn some things in. So over in the script, all we do is we say every frame, if we didn't press the spacebar return, but if we did spawn the ball, spawn ball currently isn't anything. So to actually spawn something in, we need the prefab. So let's have reference to that. So serialize field, private, game object, and we'll call it ball prefab, okay? And then we can set that in Unity. And over here, we want to spawn that in. So the simplest way to do it is to type instantiate, which is a method inside the mono behavior. I think it's actually down inside uh, object. If we keep going down, you'll find the instantiate method over here. Okay. So we want to instantiate the ball prefab. There's plenty of other parameters here we can set, which we'll do in a minute. But what this means is it'll just spawn in this prefab. Uh, in the center of the world with no parenting, just at zero, zero, zero. Let's head over to Unity, drag in the ball as the prefab, okay, press play, and then when we press spacebar, it should spawn it in. So if you look over here, we're actually spawning the balls in, but they're falling below the world because they were spawned at zero, 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 which is kind of just under the ground a little bit. So let's try spawning it in where our spawner actually is. If we go over to it, it's over here, okay, let's spawn there. So the way we do this is we go to our code, and for the second parameter, it wants a parent. Now that will actually spawn it as a child of the object. So let's do that first. We're gonna say uh, transform, okay? Which is referring to our transform. So the ball will now be a child of the spawner. If we press play, okay? It's spawning here because zero, zero, zero for this ball as a child is actually the position of that object. The only problem now is the ball is a child of the spawner. So if we spawn a few in, okay? And they go all over the place. If we now grab the spawner and move it, it actually moves all the balls because they're all children. So we actually don't want the parent to be there. So the way we can do this now is saying transform.position, which requires us to then also pass in a rotation. So transform.rotation. And now we're going to spawn in the ball at our position with our rotation, but we're not going to be a child. It'll be separate game object, which is the thing you want to do most of the time. So now if we spawn, they spawn on the same hierarchy level. So if we move the spawner, nothing happens apart from the balls now spawning in different places. That bug there with tons of them spawning is because I've not got the game view selected. If I'm in uh, the hierarchy, the actual input doesn't work properly. So just make sure you're in the uh, actual game view and have this selected when you press space so it only spawns in one, okay? And there you go, we can spawn in loads of things without actually uh, being children of the spawner. They're actually just separate completely, usually used when you fire off a projectile. So let's say once we spawned in the object, we actually want to do something like fire it off up into the air. We need to spawn in a game object, access the rigid body, and add a force. That is our logical steps to actually get to the solution. So if we go to the code, 
This is where we spawn the ball in. We actually want to do something to this. Now, luckily, instead sheet returns the game object, the game object it spawned in. So, game object ball instance equals this. Now, keep in mind, these two things are different. This is the prefab. This is the template in your project. This game object here is the instance. So if you spawned in 10, each one would be different. This is always the same, this prefab. So make sure when you want to do stuff in the scene to your projectile or whatever it is that you're spawning in, you do it to the instance past uh, return from instantiate. And now we've got access to this ball instance. We want to say, if it has a rigid body, then add some force to it. So if ball instance dot try get component rigid body, okay, out var rb. So we're going to call it rb. So if ball instance has a rigid body, rb dot add force upwards. So vector free dot up times by an amount, let's say 10f. And the force mode, if we do acceleration, we won't really notice it because that's for continuous force. We want to just basically set the velocity to be upwards. So let's say velocity change. Go back over to Unity. We basically, every time we spawn in a projectile, we say, all right, get the rigid body if it has one. If it does, add some force upwards. If I now press spacebar, whenever they spawn in, they get fired upwards, okay? And there we have it. Now there is one other way to access the rigid body, which is faster if you actually know that the thing itself is going to have a rigid body. So what we do is instead of spawning in a game object, we actually spawn in a rigid body, okay? So if the only thing you need to access off the thing you spawned in is a certain component, like one component, then you can actually reference it as that component. So rigid body, okay? Now when we spawn it in, it actually returns a rigid body. So we can say rigid body ball instance. And then now instead of saying try get component rigid body, we can just say ball instance dot add force, okay? Because it knows it's a rigid body. So it's called ball instance now. There we go. That's the only thing we've changed. And then now all it wants is when we reference it in the spawner, it wants a rigid body. So if we go back to the ball prefab and drag that in, it's now happy because it's the prefab that has a rigid body. It's referring to this now. But when you say instantiate, it actually instantiates the game object. If we press play, we should get the exact same behavior for less code. There we go. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, let me know down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me also know down below what you want to see next. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, first before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drendy, LN, Fabian Reno, Melvin, Zumran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Rec, Yoris Letter, Rene, Remy Baldwin, and Jay Donald. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my patrons down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.